1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 10. I'll be reading now the King James Version Bible tonight. Hallelujah. What a wonderful story here. Hallelujah. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. Now, Eli was the high priest. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Hear my, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I tell you, that almost brings tears to my eyes. It's the power of God that the Lord would think enough of His people that He would talk to us. Hallelujah. I tell you, I feel this tonight. The Lord is so good. Go back to verse 7 here. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, yet revealed unto Him. And I thought maybe I would speak tonight on the title, The Voice of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The voice of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we all pray? Blessed be the name of the Lord. I thank you, my Father and my Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, for your holy presence. It's here right now in my heart, in your word, Lord, your precious word. And I pray, my Father, Lord, I could pray that I could, Lord, that I could share this message that you've laid in my heart. Lord, these few words, Lord, from these lips of clay, Lord, that, Lord, in a way that you would be pleased. Lord, for I know it's your children here that's sitting before me tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'd give me a special anointing, that you'd anoint all of our hearts and our souls and our minds, Lord, to hear and to understand your word and what your spirit would say to the church tonight. And I ask it all in the name of Jesus. And the church said... Thank you for standing for the word of the Lord. You may be seated. God is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking tonight on the title, The Voice of God. The Voice of God. The Voice of God. Now, I want to tell you right here on this story right now, just to sum it up here, just so we can get it in our head. This ain't a story about you. It's not really a story about me. Really, this is a story about what has taken place in the house of God. Amen. This is a story of what's going on in the house of God here. And, uh, you know, not very many stories in the Bible 
are about the men of God or the Spirit of God in the house of... Well, not, maybe not the Spirit of God, but what's happening in the house of God, I should say here, in this sanctuary. But this is a story here, what's taking place in this, in this house of God. And it's talking about this child, Samuel. Now, if you can just bear with me tonight, I feel like the Lord's got something for us here tonight. This child, Samuel, here is ministering in the house of the Lord. Now, I don't think this is no little baby. I think this is a young boy, a young, a young man. And he's ministering in this house of God with this, with this priest. Maybe in our day it would be called a preacher or a pastor or what have you, but this high priest... And his name is Eli, and Eli has, he is ministering in this house of God with this, this high priest Eli and his two evil sons. His two evil sons. They're wicked, is what God called them. God calls them wicked, they're wicked. Amen? I mean, they're wicked. But to get a little backstory here, you got to understand where really where Samuel came from. Samuel had a godly mother, a good mother. And her name was Hannah. Hannah. She was a praying woman that was barren at the time when she was married. At the start of her marriage, she was barren. And, uh, and Hannah's desire of her heart was to bear a child, to have a child. And I think that's a good, that's a good thing, right? Amen. I think it's good for a woman to want to bear a child, a married woman to want to bury a child, marry a, bear a child. Hallelujah. That was a devil trying to hang up my tongue here. But to bear a child, amen. She goes up to the temple one day with her husband. Uh, let's see, what was her husband? I can't remember his husband's name. But anyway, she's there with her husband, and her heart is broken. Her heart is broken in chapter 1. And if you have time in your, in your devotions, maybe after during the, this week sometime, read the first, second, and third chapter of 1 Samuel. It's a, good, it's a wonderful story, a wonderful story about a beautiful young woman, a beautiful young lady. Hallelujah. And how God answered her prayer. Hallelujah. And verse 10 of this chapter 1 says that, that she was in bitterness of soul and she prays unto the Lord and she weeps sore she wept sore the word says Hannah the mother of Samuel is a heartbroken lady she's bitter she's weeping she doesn't understand why Ever been there? This is a woman that needs help in her soul. She needs an answer. She is confused. She is being tormented. She is sorrowful. All oh, the thoughts, no doubt, that's going over in her head, over and over, every day, every night, about her situation that she is in. So what does, Hannah, what does Hannah do being in that shape? I'll tell you what she does. She goes to the house of the Lord with her husband. She goes to the house of God, the temple at that time. Maybe we could say it in our days, she went to church. She went to church. And what does she do? She gets down with her heart broken. And she starts talking to the Lord. She starts talking to God. Now, I, I believe that Hannah was already a praying woman. And you find her now back at the house of God with her heart broken. Back on her knees praying unto the Lord. It's okay to do that as Christians, isn't it? We Christians, we can come to the house of the Lord when we're hurt, when we're heartbroken, when we're sorrowful and we don't know what to do. 
And the thoughts get over and over and over in our minds, in our souls. We're stuck in the situation, in the, in the addiction, the bondage, whatever. It's okay to come to the house of the Lord and call upon God. It's okay to call upon God in your bedroom. It's okay to call upon the Lord in your car, wherever at work. It's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Hannah, she comes to the house of the Lord. She wants an answer. She wants to hear an answer. She wants to get an answer from the Lord. Hallelujah. And she pours out her heart unto the Lord there in the house of God. And she tells him everything. That is, that is what we're supposed to do, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pour out everything to the Lord. She didn't go to the doctor of that day to get some pills to get through it. She didn't call up Google or Siri. What did she do? She went to God. She went to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She didn't turn to her godless friends and get their advice or their opinion. She didn't go she didn't go go to booze. She didn't go to, to, to alcohol to drown out her sorrow or drugs. No. She didn't pack her bags and just leave all of her family and her home in the situation she was in. She didn't do all of that. She went to God. She went to the house of God. There is hope in the Lord, amen. There is hope in the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a way of hope. Thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There, failure is not an answer when it comes to the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a way out of our situation if we can turn to God. Hallelujah. If we can turn to God, there is another way out of your situation. And many times the reason that we can't see it is because we're looking, Brother Atkins, in the wrong places. In the wrong places. Your situation will change, my sister, mama, grandma, hallelujah, papa, sir. Your situation and our situation, my situation can change. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If we can do exactly like this young, beautiful young lady, hallelujah, did and turn to God for our answer, our answer. Verse 11 of this chapter 1 said, it said, and she, while she was there, as she was praying, that she, she vows a vow and said unto the Lord, Lord of hosts, Lord, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forgive me, but will give unto me a man child that I will turn and give him unto the Lord all the days of my life. And what happens? The Lord hears Hannah. He hears her prayer. And what does she do? She conceives. She conceives little, she conceives with little Samuel. And the child Samuel, just to go on, just to move it on here, he grows up. He grows up. She weans little Samuel. And what does she do? She does what she said she was going to do. She takes him down to this, to this house of God, to this priest named Eli to the house of God, and she turns them over to the Lord in the house of God to serve in the house of the Lord just as she told, told the Lord in her prayer on that night there in, that, in the house of God for all the days of little Samuel's life. She did exactly what she told God she would do. She, you remember when you got saved and you promised the Lord that you'd serve Him through thick and thin? through all the days of your life that you'd never play the old ugly music, you'd never say the bad words, you'd never drink the stuff, you'd never smoke the stuff. You remember what you promised the Lord when you first got saved? Many times we make these promises and we never live up to it. We never live up to it. 
Hallelujah. The Lord brings us. God brings us through the sickness. He brings us through the cancer. He brings us through the hard times. Hallelujah. We need to be like Hannah and live up to what we promised God, what we promised the Lord. She dedicates, she dedicates her son to the Lord forever. That is what I call a wonderful mother. A wonderful mother. Hallelujah. 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 I don't want to get choked up here. A beautiful woman. Not only does she take him to the house of God every time she was supposed to take him, but she took, she took him to the house of God to leave him there. To leave him there. How many times have we seen mamas and daddies bring the children up to the house of God? Not to be negative. Bring them up to the house of God to dedicate them to the Lord. To dedicate their children to the Lord on, on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening. To never bring them to the house of God again but Easter or Christmas. Many of those same parents, they never pray for their children. They never pray with their children. They don't dedicate any time, any godly time to their children. Can we ever expect that those same children would ever bring their children to the house of God? Or their grandbaby? Or even they ever go to the house of God? Look at the house of God tonight. Look how empty the seats are, the chairs are. No doubt many of them are sitting in front of a television set somewhere tonight. What a shame. What a shame. But I'm speaking tonight on the title, The Voice of God. The Voice of God. Samuel here, now he's living here. And he's serving in the house of the Lord under this, under this priest, this priest named Eli, who is allowing his two sons to cause the people to sin. Well, causing the people to sin in the house of the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, that kind of sin in God's eyes is, a very, is very great unto the Lord. It is. Read this word. Read this story here. You know, it's one thing for us to sin ourselves, but I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters here tonight, it's another thing. You cross another line when you teach or cause others to sin before God. That's another line. And I know I'm on this, 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 this video here, but I'm going to tell you, these men and these women that say that it's all right to sin, that's something they'll stand. They'll have their appointment before the Lord. You know, I'm telling you, you cross a whole different line when you teach people the wrong things. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters here tonight, we that know better, we need to hold that standard. We're, we're being held to a higher standard, Brother Jerry, because we know what's right. Because we know what's right. We know if God's revealed to you that something's wrong, we need to stick to that, to hold to that standard. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Preacher man, Sunday school teacher, whoever you are, God's going to hold you to a higher standard. He's going to hold you to it. Amen. That's good preaching, Brother Chapman. Hallelujah. We're talking about corruption here in the house of God. Hallelujah. In this story here, I'm going to tell you, God sees what's happened, what happens in the houses of God, His church houses across this land. God Himself in this next chapter, this chapter 4 here, He addresses these two evil children of the, of the preacher, the high priest here. He addresses it. And what does he do? He slays their two, his two sons in one day. We can read that in that next chapter, chapter 4 here. Because they cause, they cause wickedness in the house of God. They cause God's people to sin. It doesn't matter how they're changing their, 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 their teaching in the seminaries of our day. It doesn't matter that they say this is okay now. This kind of lifestyle is okay now. It doesn't matter what's coming out of these, 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 these schools. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it doesn't line up to this word of God, if it doesn't line up with this holy word, and we're teaching it, we will be responsible. You will be responsible for what we say and what we do ourselves. Amen? 
Samuel is young here in this story. This verse 7 says, Hallelujah. He said, the word says that he is young here in this story and he really doesn't understand the things of God like this experienced priest, Eli. He's young in the Lord. He doesn't know. He's doing right. He doesn't understand. He's serving, Samuel is serving, doing what he knows to do in the house of God. He's ministering unto the Lord. But he's starting out in a time and place in the house of God where the priest is so messed up that he is allowing things to happen to go on in the house of God that are not right. And his very own children are the ones that's doing it. Doing it. I don't don't know if you can remember way back when you was a child, my mama made me mind in church. Did she make you? I'm going to tell you one thing. I know this ain't, this ain't, uh, what do they call it? This ain't what they want to hear. They have a name for it. Can't think of it right now. But I'll say it anyways. My mama took me out of many time and wore out my behind. And it was always my brother's fault. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. But uh, she made me mind. She spanked me. Not like these, inter- this, these internet mamas or daddies that, well, that says you don't have to wear out your child. I'm going to tell you, the Bible teaches that you, what you, is, I don't, yeah, that's right, exactly right, good. I'm glad you all are in agreement with me. You knew that scripture. Hey, did, hey did, your mama, did, did they wear you out when, they, when you messed up? Look where you're at tonight. You're in the house of God. Sister Rose, you're in the house of God. I tell you, isn't that good? It works, doesn't it? I'm not scarred for life. It didn't mess me up psychologically. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you. You know, I, uh, you know, we don't have the right to spank other people's children, but I'm telling you, we can spank our own. I'm going to tell you. We can, we can, we can take care of what, who we're supposed to take care of. Hallelujah. And I'm not, but I'm not talking about that tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 2 of our scripture here nails it. It says it. That's the term we, we say now. It nails it. And it says that, that it, it, it says just how it is in the church houses of today. That Eli's eyes began to wax dim and he could not see. And it says that the lamp of God goes out in the house of God. Oh, if that ain't a picture of the American church houses today. The lamp of God has gone out has gone dark in the houses of God all over this land. You can't even find a church on fire anymore. You can't. No oil in their lamps when there's no fire. If your lamp is not going, we know that your lamp, now I'm not, I, I ain't, Brother Charlie probably had those old coil oil, those lamps, those, what do they call them? Coal oil lamps? Kerosene lamps? Coal oil, I remember that in Kentucky, they called them coal oil. Coal oil lamps. I've seen them at the antique stores. But uh, I know you had to trim them and what have you. But it took, I do have a, I'm from Chicago, but I had enough sense to understand that, hey, you had to have fuel in them. You had to have oil in them. Amen. If you don't have oil in them, you ain't going to have no light. You ain't going to have no fire. That's a simple thing that our Lord taught in this New Testament. You got to have the oil in your lamp or it ain't going to burn. No oil, no fire, no light. You know, a child can figure that out, right? You know, my little grandbabies, they come to me with their little toys when they come to the house. They come to the the house and they'll have the toys. They've got enough sense. They got enough sense. Sister Burt, Sister Atkins, and all you mamas know, they have enough sense to know that if their little toy doesn't make a noise or if the light don't work and there's no movement, that their batteries are dead. And they always come to Randaddy because he knows that Randaddy's got the batteries. And he'll say, they'll say, Randaddy, could you replace the batteries for me? When they see that little toy, it don't have no movement. It don't have no light. And they make some fancy toys now. I'm going to tell you, they take some, and they take some expensive batteries. And they know the ones that need to be recharged. 
You know, a lot of them, they, you recharge them now. They know, you know, they know. They, 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 has to, they got to have new batteries. And what does Randaddy do? He comes to the rescue, Brother Carter. He, he goes to the closet. I don't know how you all do, but I'm digging through the closet for the batteries. You all try to find the batteries. I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a chore in itself, trying to find those batteries, Brother Summers. I'm going to tell you, I find the batteries. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and I replace their batteries. Hallelujah. God has your battery recharger. He can recharge your batteries. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God has our oil. Get your lamp all burning again. We can get our lamp. When we don't see no movement, when we don't hear no sounds, when you don't hear no, you don't see no lights, it's easy to say, that you need your batteries. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we can move, so we can praise, we can make a joyful noise. Hallelujah, we can shine that little light that these little kids, these little children sang tonight. The light, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This little light of mine, hallelujah. So our light will start shining. Young Samuel here is in the midst of a terrible time while serving in the house of of the Lord and God sees it all. God sees what happens in this church. He sees what happens in the other churches. He sees what happens in the homes. He sees what happens in the cars. He sees what happens when the lights are out. He sees what happens when the lights are on. There is nothing hid in God. Hallelujah. We might think Eli's sons might have thought they could get away with it. But God seen it all and God moved. Samuel lays down to sleep here in our story one evening. And God himself calls out to Samuel. 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 God will call out our name. Jenny. Virginia. Virginia. Richard. Richard. Rose, Rose. We can put all of our names in there. God calls out to Samuel. Samuel. Samuel hears his name. And what does he do? He says, here, I, here am I. He thought Eli was talking. And he goes running to the priest Eli. And Eli says to Samuel, hey Samuel, I didn't call you buddy. I just say it in my, my terms here, my, my way, my vernacular. Hey Samuel, I didn't call you. Hey Go on back to sleep. Go on back to bed. Go lay down. And what happens next? The Lord calls for Samuel again. Samuel. And Samuel yells out, here, here am I. And he goes running back to Eli. And Eli tells him, hey, Samuel, I did not call you. I didn't call you the second time. I didn't call you the first time. And he tells him, go back to bed. Go back to sleep. The third time, God calls out to little Samuel. Young Samuel goes running to Eli and says, Here I am I, Eli. You did call me. I heard you. Now this priest Eli now, being the man of God for years and years and years, he gets a thinking, Brother Jason. He gets a thinking. Brother Ken, he gets a thinking in his head here. He says, hey, this is God calling out Samuel. This could be God. This is God dealing with this young Samuel. He gets a thinking about it. Mama, Daddy, tonight, Grandma, Grandpa, maybe the reason your grandbaby or your children is asking you about those Bible questions or asking you about what's happening in the church services is because maybe God is calling out to them, calling out to your children, your grandchildren. Maybe He's calling out to your family. He's dealing with them by His Spirit. Maybe, just maybe, the reason that they're having all the trouble that they're having is because God is trying to get their attention. And you're there for them. You're there for them. Just perhaps maybe the reason that we are in this situation or you are in your situation 
is that God is trying to get your attention. God can get our attention, amen. He can get it. God can get their attention. We need to be living in that place. I'm telling you tonight, my brothers and my sisters tonight. We need to be living in that place in God where we can hear. And we can speak. Hallelujah. We can hear God speak to us. When he calls out to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his voice. I want to understand when God calls out to me. When he deals with me, I want to be able to understand the voice of God tonight. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Eli perceives that this boy now isn't hearing things, but that this is of God. That this is of God. Eli knew better. He did. He knew better. The priests knew the voice of God. If I wanted to understand what the voice of God sounded like, I would ask someone who has heard the voice of God. Amen? Now that's simple, isn't it? I would ask someone that heard the voice of God. Amen. I sat in a church service one day, one night. I'll never forget. Somewhere in the United States of America. I'll never forget. I sat in a church service one night and I heard this young man get up there and he preached one night. Brother Jerry. Brother Jerry might have been there. He preached there one night on everything, how you're supposed to raise your children. And he'd never been married and he never had children. Now, I sat there through the whole thing and smiled. I'm like, because I had children. And I was like thinking in my mind, hey, bud, if you're going to tell me how to raise my children, the least you can do is have children of your own. Amen. Is that a fair assumption? You know, if, if I wanted somebody to give me advice in my marriage, I think that really that the person that's going to give me the counseling should at least be married. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If somebody's going to tell me how to raise my son, they need to have a son. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm an electronic technician by trade, Brother Ken. Why would I listen to a plumber tell me how to repair electronic test equipment? No, 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 nothing against the plumber. But why would I listen to that? I would want somebody that knew something about electronic, electronics to tell me about electronics. Amen? Hallelujah. How much more when it comes to the things of God? Amen? I don't want somebody in this world that doesn't know God that has never been saved to give me a lesson in life on how to be saved. Amen? I don't think that, that I would, I don't listen to people like that. Do you? Amen. I mean, how foolish. How foolish. If I wanted to understand about the gift of healing, amen, I would talk to someone who has been healed. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason we testify, isn't it? We draw strength from those that has been through what we're, what we're going through now. Amen? If I wanted to understand the things of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, I would, and I had a question I would ask someone that has had or have a gift of the Spirit. Amen. It doesn't take no rocket scientist to figure that, figure that out. Hallelujah. I wouldn't go if I wanted to ask someone about being on fire for God and drawing closer to God and the fire of God and having oil in my lamp. 
I wouldn't go to someone that is spiritually dead as four o'clock. However, it dead it is. Pretty dead if you ask me. Why would I go to a dead church to, to find out about the fire of God? Why would I sign up to them? If I wanted to understand the things of the Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, I would talk to those who have had the experience with the gifts of the Spirit. How smart, hallelujah, don't tell me how to live for God if you're not living for God yourself, amen. We've had people come in this church, I, I tell you, well, I'm getting negative. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, I say it. I've had, I've had them come in here. I know where they come from. One night they got in their head to lay the remote down, turn the TV off and come to Sunshine Bible Church on a Sunday night. They come in here and they testify and they, they try to straighten out the whole church under one testimony. They stay a couple services. They stay a month or two. And what, where are they at now? They're sitting in front of a television tonight with a remote in their hand. You know, even a child can understand that's not right. Amen. That's not right. That's not right. Eli tells Samuel in verse 9, Eli says unto Samuel, Go lie down, Samuel, and it shall be if he calls you, that, that you should say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel goes and he lays down in his place, in his little bed. He lays there. The high priest tells Samuel, hey, Samuel, he's telling Samuel, this could be God. This could be the Lord, Samuel, talking to you. Samuel, you need to listen. Samuel, you need to lay still there, and I'll tell you how to do. I'll tell you what to do, Samuel. He speaks to Samuel, and he says, just to lay there, Samuel. And he says, when you hear the voice of the Lord, he says, you say to the Lord, Lord, speak. For your servant hears. Your servant heareth. Your servant's listening to you. Can you imagine little Samuel laying in that bed with his eyes closed, laying so still, laying so still in that bed, knowing the priest, the one that he has all the confidence in the world, told him, said, hey, lay there and be real still. And when you hear that voice, when you hear your name again, say, Lord, this is me. Your servant hears. And what happens? He goes and he lays down, Samuel does, and the Lord comes and stands there by Samuel's bed. And he calls out to Samuel as he did so many other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered just like the preacher told him. He says, Lord, speak for your servant hears. And God speaks to little Samuel because Samuel is obedient. Samuel was young in the house of God. Samuel did not yet know the voice of the Lord. The Bible says, Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Verse 7 says, it says here, it says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Listen to this. This is really important. I'm almost done. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord revealed unto him. He was young. I just want to just, just elaborate on this, and we'll call up the singers, and I'll be done just for a minute. Samuel, it says here, did not yet know the voice of, of the Lord. He's young in the Lord. He did not yet know the voice of the Lord. He did not know the Lord, it says. He did not know. And neither was the word revealed unto him. If you'll notice, these two things are side by side here in this verse 7 here. He didn't know the Lord. And he didn't know the word of the Lord at that time in his life. Was he wrong? No. He was young. He didn't know. He didn't know. We can glean a lot for us 
out of that one scripture for our life in the Lord, in Christ. If you, my brother, if you, my sister, ever want to know the Lord, if you want to know the voice of the Lord, then you need to know His Word. His Word. For this is the voice of the Lord. For our God will never speak to anything to you or to me or anybody in this world that is contrary to this holy word of God. He never will. He'll never speak nothing that is contrary to this holy word, period. Now, I've been in church all my life, Brother Terry. Brother, I have been in church all my life. And I'm telling you, I've heard about everything. I've heard what people said. I've seen things done in church I didn't understand. Sister Burke, Sister Burke, Miss Early. You know, I, I've seen things I didn't understand, Sister Shirley. And I, I didn't understand. I've heard people say that God has told them such and such. And I have questioned in my own mind, why would God tell them something that would be contrary to His Word, His written Word? But the truth is, my friend, tonight, many times, many, many times, God has absolutely nothing to do with what people say that he has something to do with. God will never, ever, ever, ever speak for us to do anything that would harm others. Ever. Ever. Not your spouse. Not your children. Not our neighbor. Or yourself. God ain't going to tell us to sue our neighbor. He's not going to tell us to sue. He ain't going to tell us to run down someone. He ain't going to tell us to call someone up on the phone and, and be negative about somebody. He's not going to do nothing like that. God would never speak for us to do anything like that. God would never tell us to hurt ourselves. He would never tell us to take our life. He would never tell us to do any kind of anything negative to our body, to our family, our children. I'm going to tell you, when we spank our children, we're spanking them. I'm going to tell you, when I've spanked my children, I've had to turn my head in tears sometimes to correct my children. I've had to ground them, Brother Jerry, and I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't want to do that. Usually I give them a 10-minute talk before I spank them, Brother Charlie. They were getting ready to drop their pants and say, just spank me and get it over with. They didn't want to hear the talk. God doesn't want us to hurt our children. He doesn't want to hurt us to hurt our children or our wife or our family, our husband. He doesn't want us to do that. God would never speak for us to do that ever, ever. This is a gospel of forgiveness. This is a gospel of mercy. This is a gospel of grace. Hallelujah. And that same grace, as hard as it is to swallow, Brother Ken, Levi, the same grace that God has given us is the same grace that He will give to them. He will give to our family. He will give to others, our enemies, if they ask. It's that same grace. The same grace, the same mercy that God has showed you and you and you and you is the same grace that He will show them. It's the same mercy. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what they have done. It didn't matter what you had done. It isn't going to matter to them what they have done. Sister Rachel, Sister Monica, if you'd like to come, I'm almost finished. If you can come up quick. Samuel thought that the voice of God is very important here. Samuel, when he heard the voice of the Lord, you know who he thought it was? He thought it was a man. He thought the voice of God was a man's voice. 
That's important to understand. Samuel thought it was Eli. He thought it was the preacher talking. He did. He thought it was just the preacher out up there telling him. He thought the preacher was saying it. When really it was God speaking. It was God speaking to that young Samuel. God was speaking to Samuel. God himself was speaking to Samuel. I don't think it ever crossed Samuel's mind that God was dealing with him. I don't think that Samuel understood that God would even speak to him. My brothers and my sisters tonight, I say this, I really don't believe that many of us understand that God speaks to you every church service, every time you pray, every time you worship Him, your Father speaks to you. He uses people. He uses others to give us help, to give us strength. He uses the preacher. He uses the Sunday school teacher. He uses the song. He uses His Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe in a thousand years, little Samuel would have never imagined God would speak to me? Samuel, God would speak to me laying in bed? Well, God spoke to you tonight before you got saved or you would have never got saved. God speaks to us all if we can just listen. If we could just hear and just understand. Hallelujah. You know, it's easy to shake our head no and say that something is not of God. It's easy to do that. It's easy to say, I don't believe in all that. I don't believe that God does this. I don't believe God does that. Anybody can do that. Anybody can say that. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. Little Samuel was the type. He had it in his heart and his soul. Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Whatever you have for me, Lord, I want it. Samuel. Samuel was hungry for the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because certain scriptures, my friend, tonight have never been revealed to us, just because certain scriptures have never been revealed to us doesn't, doesn't make, them, make them false or not true. Doesn't mean that they're wrong. For the more that we read this word, the more that we pray unto the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, the more that we hear this spirit-filled preaching, hallelujah, the more that we're led by this sweet Holy Spirit, hallelujah, 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 the more that we get down on our knees when nobody's around and we raise our hands and worship the Lord, hallelujah, we will learn the voice of God, hallelujah, we will learn when and how God speaks to us by His Spirit. You and I tonight can know, hallelujah, we all can know and learn the voice of God. Amen. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you like to sing tonight.